This video deals with a very important topic of taking a column of numeric data and determining whether or not that data could reasonably have come from a normal distribution. Now there are two main reasons you might want to do this. First off, you might want to use the normal distribution as a model in order to determine probabilities. For example, you may have a set of specification limits for a variable and want to estimate the percentage of the time that you'll be within the specification limits. If the normal distribution provides a good model for your data, then you can calculate probabilities from that normal distribution to estimate how often you'll be within spec. Secondly, you might want to use a test procedure that assumes the data come from a normal distribution. For example, if you have data from two different methods, you might want to use an f-test to compare the standard deviations of the two methods. Well, that test is very sensitive to whether or not the data come from a normal distribution, so you really need to verify that assumption. As an example, I've loaded into the Stat Graphics data sheet a sample of 100 observations having to do with the breaking strength of widgets. I'm curious to know whether the data in this column, the 100 observations, could reasonably have come from a normal distribution. To do this in Stack Graphics, you go to the Describe menu, to the section on Distribution Fitting, and select Fitting Uncensored Data. The column of data I'm interested in here is Strength, so I'll press OK. Now this distribution fitting procedure does a lot more than just test for normality. In fact, we can fit any of 45 different probability distributions. In this case, I'm just inter interested in the normal, however, so I'll, I'll keep it at its default. When the list of tables and graphs comes up, there are a number of things you can check. I'm going to ask for the test for normality on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, I'm going to ask for a frequency histogram and also a quantile-quantile plot. I'll then press OK, and it will open up an analysis window with a single table and two graphs. Let's start with the graph in the upper right corner. This shows a histogram of the data with the best-fitting normal distribution superimposed on top of it. That's actually a normal distribution with the same mean and the same standard deviation as the data. Now you can probably sense from this plot that the normal distribution may not be the best model for the data. How, however, I only have 100 observations. And there's a lot of variability amongst samples that have only 100 observations. So I really don't necessarily want to read too much into this plot without doing some sort of statistical test. Putting this plot away for a moment, I'll double click in the bottom right, and here you see an interesting plot. It's called a quantile quantile plot. What this plot does is it begins by taking the 100 observations in the data set. And along the y axis, you'll see the actual measured strength of my widgets. What it's done is it's actually sorted the data from smallest to largest. So this point down in the bottom which is at about 191 pounds per square inch. This is the smallest observation in the data. Now, it's taken each of the points from the smallest to the largest and plotted it versus the expected value for n order statistics from a normal distribution. That is, the sorted values of 100 observations taken from a normal distribution. And you can see that this lowest point is plotted along the x-axis at about 188. That means that we would expect, given a sample from a normal distribution with the mean and standard deviation that we've observed, to see the smallest value down around about 188. The fact that it's up at around 191 is an indication that the tail of the distribution at the lower end is a little short. The observations don't go down as far as you would expect if they really followed a bell-shaped curve. 
On the other hand, if you look at the largest observation, that's up here, it's at about 229, 230. It's plotted at a point on the x-axis that's about 219. In other words, we've observed a value much larger than we would expect, again, from a normal distribution with the mean and standard deviation that correspond to my data. In general, if the normal distribution fit my data well, I would expect these points on this quantile-quantile plot to fall approximately along a straight line. They don't appear to me to be very straight. Um, I see a nice amount of curvature. Now, that's again subjective, of course, which is why if I put the graph away and double-click on the table, we'll see a Shapiro-Wilk test. Now, Shapiro-Wilk test basically looks at that quantile-quantile plot and asks, are the data, the observed quantiles, close enough to what I would expect for the fitted normal distribution? And the way you interpret this test is you look at the p-value. If the p-value is small, let's say below 0.05, then at the 5% significance level, you can reject the idea that the data are a sample from a normal distribution. In this case, the p-value is 0 0.00003, which means it's very unlikely that this sample came from a normal distribution. Well, if the normal distribution is not a good model for your data, what do you do? Well, there are two basic approaches. First, you could look for a different distribution that gave a better fit for your data. If you can't find a distribution that fits, you might be able, on the other hand, to find a transformation of the data after which the transformed values are close to being normally distributed. I'll be talking about each of these approaches in a another video.